Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to KG's Garage. Um, today I'm working on the RV, the GMC motorhome. I'm putting the front end back together. Uh, here's all the parts right here. Ooh, look at that right there, look at this. Dude, that's a skink. Oh, look at that thing. Okay, anyway. Uh, the first thing I need to do, get the lower control arm, control arms, put those in, the spindle, which is rebuilt, and then the upper. And then I'm also going to swap, swap out the brakes. I have a new tie rod right here. Um, brake hoses, the sway bar, new calipers are in here, upgraded calipers. Here's other sway bar pieces of sway bar links. The brake pads right there. Oh, new drag link. Need to put that in. I still take the old one out. And the last thing is going to be the steering shaft. I got to replace this boot right here. You take that boot off, put this boot on, and then this, I don't remember, it goes over here I think, I don't remember, oh no, it goes on the shaft, that's in the, in the car already, that's for the brakes, some nuts for the brakes, and, and here is some grease that goes in with the steering shaft, so let me show you what we're do working on, what the end result is going to be, it's going to be that. All this stuff, all new, new bushings and everything. I'm gonna get it as close as possible to what the other alignment was. I'm gonna have to go get it aligned. Now this side, there's nothing here, so I gotta start from scratch. And I'm gonna put the low control arm, like I said, upper spindle. Oh, drive, uh, drive axles too. Okay, first thing you wanna do, you gotta look at the. Uh, torsion bar mount over there. So when I rotate this torsion bar, you see that moves over there. So you really want this as up all the way. It's hanging. It has to be up as much as possible. And if you pull it towards you, twist it so that thing's up in the top pull this towards you so it will stay make sure it doesn't rotate and now I have to slide there's the insert right here in the lower control arm put it on there I added some grease there was some old grease I put more grease on there hopefully it'll help it go in and out easier so you take the control arm and what you want is you want this sucker, this control arm, pointing as far down this way as possible. Problem is, when you go to put it in, you'll see it won't, won't go in there. But anyway, as far down as possible, so that's about it. It's in the ground. Let's see, it just spun. All right, so right there. And get your hammer, just tap it, tap it, tap it. I'm moving it, wiggling it, doing whatever I gotta do. Move whatever I gotta do to get it to move over. It's stuck right there. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. Now, get it here. It's hitting the, this bar here. You want to get it here, but it can't go in. There's no way. This, this, the the bottom of the control arm is hitting this support piece over here so you gotta go move it a little bit out of the way this side's already in it's gotta go up a little bit might be able to get the bolt in there actually get a screwdriver move it a little bit Up. 
And you can see this is the screwdriver that I've been using for, for uh, bending stuff. It's not straight anymore. Anyway, so let me see if I can. It's going. Let's see. Ah, that might work. All right, it's in. And I'm not tightening any of these bolts up right now. I'm just getting them on there because I want I want the actual bushing to be moving and not get bind up on the on the metal. So I'm not tightening them. All right, so I got that side in. Now I got to get this side in. It's way off. If you look at the torsion bar go like this comes out the bottom and that's what this is all the way up so i'm gonna push it down so it's coming out the bottom i'm gonna push it down but i can't get this in over here at this angle it'll never go in that's the angle it needs to go in to keep that torsion bar mount up bang it it just won't go so you bring it right about here and it goes in pretty good it's almost there i can bang it a little bit right see it goes in perfect just like that i don't know if it's lined up on the other side this side looks pretty good all right so i don't know what it looks like on the other side let's see right there boom right in bolt on the nut i mean put the nut on well, that's where it goes in easy. You look at the torsion bar, it's sticking out. So if I push down on this, push down a little control arm, that will go in. But that's got to go down a lot. I still need to put the, all this rest of the stuff on here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, I have that torsion bar tool right there. I'm going to do this, I'm going to push this up with the torsion bar tool so I can get the bolts in you can see on the other side the bolt is in let's see how it's sticking down I'm still gonna adjust the ride height but stick that here crank this up and then I'll put up then I'll put the, the bolt in there and then I can put all these pieces on up here once you put the drive shaft in here this thing won't go down for this won't go down further than probably like right about here with the drive shaft in Okay, the way this tool works, it's got this little, it's got this little notch right here, and there's a hole in the frame somewhere. Right here where my finger is, there's a hole in the frame. So that piece goes in the hole in the frame. All right, so then there's a little divot in the chuck right here where this end goes in. So I need to push this all the way over. <laughs> the actual has to go up means I need some pressure there we go okay so we got it in there all right so it should go fairly easy there's no it's just a control them over there no weight or anything I'm just gonna keep going until I see the other end of the chuck go above So if you see over here in this hole, it's clear now. So I can get the, the bolt and the nut in there. All right. I have the nut, I'll call it, and the bolt. This is an extra long bolt I got from Alex Serum um, for more adjustability. So this goes in here like this. It just sits in there. And you get the bolt. All right, there we go. Okay, so now we got the nut on. I'm gonna take off the tool. I'm gonna drop down the pork chop. And it only goes down as far as this is hitting it. So and this isn't actually hitting the pork chop yet. Now it's hitting. 
then you would hit this and it would raise up the uh, thing over there. All right, so now I can go put all the other parts on. Let me go get the spindle and I'll see if I can get the drive shaft too. This is fun because the nut is what holds this bottom spindle on, bottom of the spindle. So I gotta lift this up onto here. Okay. Okay, spindle's on. I gotta get the drive shaft. I need to clean the bolts off first though. So let's go do that. I'm just gonna hit him on his wire wheel for just get him clean. Get all the dirt off him. Like brand new. So I got the CV axle in. I put the washer nut on the front. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the up control arms, put them here. This way I can lift this up and have everything supported. So let me get the upper control arm. Control arm. And I was able to find new bolts, camber bolts. There's a part number right there. AC Delco. That's the part number on the bag. Okay. So it comes with, obviously the bolt, nut, and a lock washer. But what the other aftermarket ones don't have are these washers that I don't know if you can tell they got a round edge and they're chafered like the uh, original ones so they're a little bit different washers are different they have different these cuts in the holes are different I don't know if you can tell flat side on this flat side on each side here this only has a flat side at one so what happens is this one here goes all the way and then this one only goes to there it's cut so it just stops right there I did the other side it doesn't seem like it's a problem so all right let's put these in hammer action here Just tap it in, and whichever one gets close first, I'll do that one. I'm guessing where this goes. Get as close as possible to where it was before. I'm looking at where it was worn before, so it's somewhere right around here. So I'll move it a little bit later. Get this out of my way. All right, let's get this one in. It's almost there. And I was having trouble, I had to get the washer set the right way. Okay, so the washer, see it's supposed to be set like this. It was facing all the way down. And now it looks like I damaged the threads. <laughs> yeah, I damaged the threads. Yeah, I wanted them to be able to freely move. Yeah, see how this came all the way down? This thing right up there. Okay. Yeah, I want the metal to be spinning. All right. Because sometimes when you when you crush these, when you crush these here, it's just the rubber that will be flexing, and the metal is just supposed to stay. Now I gotta lift this up, get it on here. Actually, I don't think I'm going to be able to lift it up. I need to get the jack, shove it under here, and lift it up more. It's hard to get it more where I'm jacking it up. I really need to jack it up all the way over here. That's on there. Whew. Now I can let go of this, jack it up right underneath the little ball joint. 
tighten it up a little bit. All right, that's snug. I don't want to make it too tight right now. Okay, now I have to get in here, inside here, and get the uh, differential. Let's turn this. The bolts that hold the drive shaft in, or the axle, are these 12.716 bolts. I don't have a 3/8 drive, but I do have the only 12 point I have is this half inch drive, 7/16. So I'm going to do 7/16 with a half inch adapter to 3/8 drive, and then and then a couple of uh, extensions. This hub nut here is an inch and a half. I'm just going to. Put it on there real quick. It's not to the spec, I'll have to torque it down later. I just wanted to get that on there. So this is the same as doing the other way around. I wanna put a little bit of red, I want a blue Loctite, I don't have any. I wanna put some <coughs> red Loctite, just a dab on these bolts, just in case. I got the long extension, this here. Six of them. That was one. So let me get this top one in. Get this. And just spin them in there a little bit. And just spin this in that spot. Spin it. So what happens is when you go to tighten it, the whole thing spins. So I take a screwdriver, that's how this thing got bent, and I stick it right here in the rotor. And then it'll come up and it'll hit, and then I can tighten it down. So here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just to make sure, I'm gonna go to the next one. Yeah, it's tight. Get this out. I'm gonna lower down the jack. I'm gonna start tightening everything up. Tighten up. Let's see how tight it is. That's pretty good. Top's tight, bottom's tight. Let's get these ball joint ones tight. Now with the ball joint, I get them real tight. And back it up, and I back it off. Okay, so now it's loose. I'm tighten it back up. Look where. Cotter pin hole is and get to where the cotter pin hole is. And the bottom one, 15 16s. Tight and loosen it. Okay, loosen it and tighten it so where I can get the cotter pin in. Camera picks it up. See right there? There's the hole. The cotter pin will slide right in there. Uh, so now I need to put the steering on right here to here. Oh, and the shock. All right, so what do I have here with the tie rods? These are all new parts right here. And I marked this here. So this says passenger out. Okay, so it goes this way. Okay. So what I did was I measured this one measured how long this one was and I kept spinning these until I got this one to be about what this one was 
It's not gonna be perfect, but it will the closest I can get it with a, without actually getting it aligned yet. All new parts. I just gotta put these in. I did take a, I took a tape measure, measure from here, from the end to end, and the same thing on the other one. So it's it's guessing, but it's gonna be pretty. I think it's gonna be pretty close. And then after all this, I'm gonna have to grease everything up. So I'm not gonna. I won't forget that step. I'm just seating these uh, sleeves here. Okay, so this was the outside. So it goes like this. This goes like that. This goes here. Same thing. Tighten it. Loosen it. Well, I have more little tap. This guy. Okay. Bottom's tight, so all everything's tight. I'm gonna spray paint it, spray paint it all, make it look nice. I cleaned them. Okay. I wanted to spray all that stuff first before I put the shock in. This way, I wouldn't paint the shock. It's there, and it goes there. Put the jack under here. Okay, the only thing that's left to do is to torque this down. Oh, I gotta grease everything and put cotter pins in. And then I gotta do the brakes. Oh, the sway bar too. The sway bar and the sway bar links. All right, I'm gonna measure the old one, which is this solid one here. I don't know where I measure it from. So it looks like it's 21. Yeah, that's 21. All right, so let's see what I have here. Oh, it's shorter than 21, so I gotta back this out. Let's back this out like on two turns. Now I wanna make it the same directions as that. Yeah, okay. Now I'm gonna tighten these down. So this goes the front, now one goes up on the top. It's 13s. Wrench. Put this on. So this here. Bunch of cotter pins, some small ones in here. I gotta separate them. So, to do these cotter pins, there's the hole right there. I'm gonna go through the back, come through. And I use needle nose pliers. And there's two different levels on this cotter pin. One piece is longer than the other, right? So, I grab the one and I just Bend it around. Oop. Where am I going to bend it? I see a lot of people they leave this one bent like that. I don't like that. I like to bend this one the other way too. And then you can grab it and I just crunch it down. And go on this side and you just uh, do this to all the other ones. So in case you don't know what this what the cotter pin is supposed to do. Cotter pin is supposed to stop this nut from coming from backing off. So as you're driving, if it starts getting loose for some reason, let's say this wears or something, back and forth vibrations, um, this cotter pin will stop this nut from going all the way back, backing off. So that's it's just a safety measure. So I'm gonna do the same thing for all the other spots that I need cotter pins in, you know, upper to lower, the other tie rod, the other wherever else, and then um. We'll come back and we'll put that we'll put the sway bar in. All right, we're going to be replacing this old cruddy uh, dry rotted sway bar bushings. 
with these nice ones from Energy Suspension. It has a hole in it. It has a grease fitting. You'll put, be able to put grease right in there. So it goes like that. It goes around the sway bar and just like that, done. They give you some washers, but they don't give you new bolts. So I'm gonna use these old bolts that came with it. So these things split open like this. Split it open. Put it on the sway bar. 15 sixteenths. It looks like the bar is a little bigger than that. So these sway bar, it's a 15 sixteenth sway bar brushing, right? Here's a 15 sixteenth wrench. It should fit over that. It doesn't. And if you look at the bushings, it's a big gap. It's supposed to close all the way around it. So these are the wrong bushings, I believe. So this isn't going on. Well, we got everything on. We put all the cotter pins in everywhere. This one, that one. So the next thing to do is brakes, calipers. I have to get a new bushing. So I just wanted to show you a quick way, this is a sway bar on the GMC motorhome, to find out what diameter this uh, bar is. So I have an adjustable wrench here. You get the adjustable wrench. You can do this with, with calipers or whatever, right? But anyway, so adjustable wrench. Put it on there. I'm trying to get it off. It's not coming off. Oh, come on. All right, now. I have a measurement. Now I just take a tape measure. Let's measure, let measure. It looks like it's a little more than an inch, inch, inch and an eighth. Inch and an eighth. I don't know if that's our size for a, for a sway bar, but I'm gonna look, I'm gonna, I don't know if that's a size for a sway bar, an inch and an eighth, but I'm gonna look it up. It's, the size that I bought was 15 sixteenths. Doesn't seem like that's that's doesn't fit. I need a bigger one, so I'm gonna go online and see if there's a bigger one um, that will fit. All right, it was just a that was just a quick little tip. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna be doing the I got new uh, stabilizer sway bar bushings. So this one here, the 5160R, was too small. That's this guy right here. So I went out and got. 5162R. Bigger. You can see the size difference. So let's go see if this bigger one fits. That's way bar. It's supposed to go right here, but let's see if I can put it right here. Put it right here. Oh yeah. That fits a lot better. Look at once I uh, put the clamp on there, it'll be it'll close that right up. The old other one, this one here, that other, the other part number. Look at that. Look at that gap, man. I can see my finger in there. So definitely the wrong size bushing. So this is going on the GMC motorhome. I don't know if there's different size sway bars for different years. Mine's a 76. Maybe it's supposed to have this one. Somebody upgraded it or I have no idea. But this one here, an inch and one sixteenths. Fits fine, so that's that's what I have to put on here. So five, 15 sixteenths, not big enough. So if anybody has use for a 15 sixteenths square bar bushings, I will. I have them available. All right, this is easy to put on. Just wrap it around there, and the two screws and the two bolts are done. I'm gonna put these new. Energy, energy suspension bushings on here. Part number is nine. Well, it doesn't matter the part number. It's an inch and one sixteenth. Inch and one sixteenth, yep. So I just have this, the old thing just sitting up here just holding it. Actually, that one's not even holding it. So the moral of the story is make sure that you measure your sway bar before getting bushings. I didn't do that. I just guessed what should have been stock and that guess was wrong. That, this on here, 
it. All right, the same thing on the other side. I want to thank Jeff Serum at Alex Serum GMC Motorhome for getting me the all those the parts I needed. Um, also for having the hubs in stock and drive shafts in stock. Uh, if, if it wasn't for that, I was going to get the drive shafts rebuilt, but he had some in stock, so I just went and got the new ones that, that are, he already had rebuilt. It was a little more time effective to do that. And um, he's one of the only ones that has reconditioned hubs. Uh, both, both the hubs I had, the, the bearings were, or the, the surface was all worn out, so when they went to put new bearings in, they just slid right in and out. So he put new bearings and a new hub. So it costs a lot of money, but it's all new parts now. And once I get this alignment done, I think it's going to drive a lot better. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, if you want to see more, please uh, hit the subscribe button. So if you have any questions or anything, put them down in the comments below, and I will do my best to read them and answer them. I go through and I answer pretty much every question that, that is out there if I, if I know the answer. If I don't, I will just, um, I'll make one up and pretend that it's a good answer. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to find out um, what the correct answer is and maybe point you in the right direction. Um, yeah, so I just want to say thanks and thanks for watching. Please, if you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe, like, and hit the notification and you'll get notified when I have new videos out on this uh, motorhome. I, there's still a whole bunch more plans. I'm not going to stop working on this thing. There's a lot more to do than just um, this front end. But finally, the front end's getting put back together. It's looking pretty good. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do another video on upgrading the brakes. So you can wait for that one. And the only other thing I have to do with this is torque that down to a million foot pounds. And uh, so, it so it doesn't get loose. And then I got to put a cotter pin in there. I need to get another cotter pin. I don't have the another big cotter pin that goes in there, so I have to find one. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks a lot. See ya.